In this section, we will talk about classification and marking. Before any QoS mechanism can be applied, IP traffic must first be identified and categorized into different classes based on business requirement. Network devices use classification to identify IP traffic as belonging to a specific class. After the IP traffic is classified, marking can be used to mark or color individual packets so that other network devices can apply QoS mechanisms to those packets as they traverse the network. Packet classification is a QoS mechanism responsible for distinguishing between different traffic streams. It uses traffic descriptors to categorize an IP packet within a specific class. Packet classification uh, should take place at the network edge as close to the source of the traffic as possible. Once an IP packet is classified, packets can be, then be marked, remarked, queued, polarized, shaped, or any combination of these and other actions. The following traffic descriptors are typically used for classification. For internal QoS groups, and these are locally significant to router guys. Physical interface, sub-interface or port, that is for layer 1. MAC address and class of service bits, that is for layer 2. MPLS EXP bits for layer 2.5, that is where the MPLS operates actually. DSCP and IPP and source destination IP addresses are for layer 3. TCP or UDP ports for layer 4. And next generation network based application recognition, which is MBAR2, is for layer 3. 7. Okay, MBAR2 is a, a deep inspection engine that can classify and identify a wide variety of protocols and applications using layer 3 to layer 7 data including difficult to classify applications that dynamically assign TCP or UDP port numbers. MBAR2 guys can recognize more than 1000 applications and monthly protocol packs are provided for recognition of new and emerging applications without requiring an iOS upgrade of router reload. MBAR2 has two modes of operation and they are protocol discovery and modular QoS CLI. When it comes to packet marking, that is a QoS mechanism that colors a packet by changing a field within a packet or a frame header with a traffic descriptor so it is distinguished from other packets during the application of the other QoS mechanisms. And here are the traffic descriptors used for marking and for internal QoS groups. For layer 2, this time 802.1Q For layer 2, class of service bits for layer 2.5, that is MPLS EXP bits again, and for layer 3, DSCP and IPPP. Let's go ahead with the layer 2 marking. The 802.1Q standard is an IEEE specification for implementing VLANs in layer 2 switched networks. That one Q specification defines two two-byte fields and they are TPID 
and TCI, which are inserted within an Ethernet frame following the source address field. As you can see in here, TPID is 16 bits and TCI is also 16 bits. In TCI also we have PCP, DEI and the VID fields. TCP, PCP, I'm sorry, is 3 bits, DEI is 1 bit and VID is 12 bit. So a uh, PCP field is uh, for the priority code point field. Okay. And DEI field is for drop eligible indicator. The DEI field is a one bit field you can see in here. And this field can be used independently or in conjunction with PCP to indicate frames that are eligible to be dropped during times of the congestion. And VID is the VLAN identifier. The VLAN ID field is 12-bit field that defines the VLAN used by that one q Since this field is 12 bits, it restricts the number of VLANs supported by that one q to 4096. Let's go with the PCP. The field uh, PCP is used to mark packets as belonging to a specific COS class of service. The COS marking allows a layer 2 Ethernet frame to be marked with eight different levels of priority priority values from 0 to 7 where 0 is the lowest priority and 7 is the highest one. So figure on the screen includes the IEEE.1P specification standard for definition of the each class of service. You can see in here the network traffic type has the highest priority and Background is the lowest one. So as packet travels to from its source to the destination, it might traverse non.1q trunked or non-Ethernet links that do not support the class of service field. Using marking at layer 3 provides a more persistent marker that is preserved end to end. This time we use TOS field guys. You can see on the screen itself. The TOS field is an 8 bit field where only the first 3 bits of the TOS field referred to as IPP are used for marking and the rest of the bits are unused. IPP values, uh, which range from 0 to 7, allow the traffic to be portioned in up to 6 usable classes of services. IPP 6 and 7 are reserved for internal network use. Okay, here is the last step. The packets are classified and marked to receive a particular per hub forwarding behavior on network nodes along their path to destination. This behavior may be expedited, delayed, or dropped something. The diff serve field is used to mark packets according to their classification into diff serve behavior aggregates. A diff serve behavior aggregate is a collection of packets with the same diff serve value crossing a link in a particular direction. Per hop behavior is the externally observable forwarding behavior applied at a diff serve compliant node to a collection of packets with the same diff serve value crossing a link in a particular direction. So a uh, class there are four uh, PHPs that we need to focus and class selector CSPHP is the First three bits of the DSCP field are used as the CS bits. 
The CS bits make DSCP backward compatible with uh, IP precedence because IP precedence uses the same three bits to determine class. And when it comes to default forwarding PHP, this is used for best effort service. AFPHP is used for guaranteed bandwidth service and EFPHP is used for low delay service.